Which means that we have to be able to step out of our comfort zone and reach someone that we would never be able to reach sitting inside of a building. Amen. You may be in the sector of education. God may have given you favor with people. And, and there are some people that you reach inside of education feel that will never walk inside of a four-wall building. But they'll be able to be impacted by the life that you live just by explaining to them and demonstrating what the kingdom of God looks like. Uh -huh. And see, when you understand that, it then causes us to understand that God is not surprised that you're insecure about yourself. But, here's the third thing. God never changes his mind about you. Amen. So I'm going to read the first thing. We offer God a long list of excuses. Number two, God never seems surprised. My Lord. And number three, God never changes his mind about you. Mm. That's enough to get you through this week. Amen. To let you know that even when it seems rough, and you don't know how it's going to work out. One door closed. Come out of another door. That door closed. Walk out of another door. That door closed. Every time you turn around, there's a brick wall in front of you. My Lord. God has not changed his mind about you. Mm. And so, we find ourselves at the crux of Joshua chapter 10. Joshua himself feeling inadequate because of his age and because of his youthfulness. But yet God had not changed his mind about him. Amen. And then on the crux, Joshua on the crux of the old covenant. The apostles on the crux of the new covenant. And now they're standing there as physical embodiment representations of God inside of a room. And what happens? What happens? What happens? I'm, I'm glad you asked me to tell you. What happens is, they were being attacked for performing a miracle. Mm. All they did was pick a man up off the street. He got up and went bumping and leaping. And then all of a sudden, they got scared because a miracle took place. People fear what they don't understand. People fear what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. It was Dr. Caroline Leaf who said, you cannot change the events or circumstances of your life, but you can change your reactions. You cannot change the events or circumstances of your life, but you can change your reactions. Notice what verse 23 said. They cannot change the fact that they were already in trouble. But they had to now change their mentality about how they see trouble. And instead of them complaining about trouble, they now saw themselves in transition. And what happens? And as they were being let go, they began to pray. And verse 25 says, they asked the question, just like David, why do the nations rage? And the people plot vain things. Jesus always said, and I'm getting ready to close, Jesus always said that the children of darkness have mastered things that the kingdom of light itself has not mastered. Why do nations rage and people plot vain things? Because when you don't understand a move of God, you become Antichrist. Look around you. Look at the world we live today. Acts chapter 4 says this. Look what it says. It says, they were forbidden to call the name Jesus. Everywhere. We today, if you go to any civic function, chaplaincy or not, Billy Graham, Billy Graham's son, two weeks ago, I don't know if you heard about this, Billy Graham's son, two weeks ago, had made a comment about other religions. And all he was really saying is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he got a phone call asking him not to come to do the national prayer on prayer day. Wow. What is happening in our culture? Everybody loves God. 
Oh, I believe in God. Some folks even tell you they are God and all that other kind of stuff. But we reject Jesus. Yes. Oh, he was, oh, yeah, you know, Jesus, he's just like one of us. No. They were forbidden to call the name of Jesus. And when they were forbidden to call the name of Jesus, that's when they couldn't stop calling the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to give an illustration. I'm going to say one more thing. And then I'm going to close. Bishop Ryan Tamaki out of New Zealand. And see, one thing I told someone the other day is that we are blessed here in the United States. We are blessed. Amen. Uh, I was reading a magazine a month or two ago. And uh, a person said in a magazine, a success magazine, he said, if you live in the United States, you need to jump and leap every day because you won, you won the lottery and didn't know it. Right. <laughs> he said, if you live in the United States every day, I'm not advocating for no, I think that that's one of the most deceiving ways to get anything. But he said, he said, he said, you won, you won a free lottery trick and didn't know it. He said, because if you look at the framework of the world, everybody tries to be like us. Right. Amen. Everybody. everybody. Everybody, everybody tries to be like us, literally. Amen. Literally. I'm doing like Bishop Higgins. Now, here, take that. Literally, everybody tries to be like us. Because if I don't look at it, I'll close. Everybody tries to be like us. I remember when I was in Canada. They were asking me questions about Ed Hardy. I don't wear Ed Hardy. I don't know about that stuff. I don't wear Ed Hardy. Does my Ed Hardy get is it ready for when I go to New York? I said, I guess so. And then they came to New York and purchased the stuff. Do I look good? I said, yeah, you look fine to me. Is this how you guys wear it? I said, I don't pay attention. There's 8 million people here. You think I pay attention to the first time I walk outside? I'm going to change my garbage outside. I see somebody new. I don't think I'm worried about what they think about me. <laughs> but it makes you think. God strategically in his mind, oh, this is something, and I didn't think about it because it blessed me. God, strategically in his mind, puts you in the financial capital of the world. For what? To change someone's life. The world is looking at us. I don't care how much inflation we have. I don't care how much debt we are. I don't care how high the GDP gets. And it gets higher every second, literally. I was at the Museum of American Finance a week ago, and they have a little ticker. It gets higher every second. But no matter how high it gets, people are still going to look at us. Why? Because the culture itself is shaped by the values of high metropolitan areas. That's why Paul always went to meet with Caesar. Paul didn't waste time with locals. He, he, he enjoyed local stuff, but Paul always met with the best because he understood that if he could get the mind of the best, he could reach the entire city. God has given us an assignment. He's given us, he's given us the ability to understand some things. And, and it, was, it was Bishop Brian Tatomaki who said this, and after this I'm closing. He said, if we save every child who is born in church, we will have more people to do everything without ever having to go outside. I'm going to say it again. He said, if we save every child born in church, we'd have more people to do everything without ever having to go outside. Why do I say that? Because in World Religions class, we learned that normally around the age 16 is when teenagers start to leave church. They stay from childhood, normally around age 16 is when they start to leave. In other faiths, they normally come in around 22 to 25. Since their mind is now developed between 22 and 25, they stay in that particular faith longer. Christ comes in at an early age. Culture distracts you around the time you turn 13, 14, 15. And because of the cultural distractions now, we are at a war with people who now are trying to figure out who they are. Amen. Still trying to understand who you are. 